Today, according to our Vaishnav calendar, is the day where we observe the disappearance of one of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's very intimate, merciful associates. A very prominent branch on the tree of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Parishads, Srila Narahari Sadakar. Lord Chaitanya brought with him the eternal denizens of the spiritual world. They assume forms of devotees, the most humble, dedicated, and merciful personalities that this world has ever seen. Madhumati is one of the confidential gopi assistants of Srimati Radharani in Goloka. Gorgano Dashtapika reveals that she appeared in this world as Narahari Sadakar. He appeared in the village of Srikanda, which is not far from Katwa, the place where Lord Chaitanya accepted the renounced order. He took birth in a family of great physicians. His father's name was Sri Narayan. His mother was Sri Goyi. Sri Narayan had three sons. The eldest was named Mukunda Sadakar. And then there was Madhava and Narahari, an amazing family. Mukunda had a son named Raghunandan Thakur. So Mukunda sent his younger brother to Navadweep to study the scriptures. Navadweep was the high seat of learning for the holy scriptures in all of India. In fact, Nisikant Sanyal, in his book, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he describes Navadweep in terms of the 1930s in India. He said it was the Oxford of India for Vedic studies. So Narahari Sarakar, living in Navadweep, became a profound scholar of the Holy Scriptures. But not only that, he realized the essence and wrote beautiful books and poems describing the intimate rasas of the love of Vrindavan. This is even before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested his Sankirtan movement. He's a great devotee. And sometime later, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first came back from Gaya, his constant associate was Gadadhar Pandit. You remember the story how Lord Chaitanya was in so much divine ecstasies of separation from Krishna. Only Gadadhar Pandit had the purity and the intelligence to pacify the Lord. So the Lord's mother, Sachi Devi, requested Gadadhar Pandit, please always remain with my child, never leave him. And he took that order very seriously. Gadadhar Pandit, who was approximately the same age as Lord Chaitanya, was the constant association of Lord Chaitanya. But there was one other associate, and that was Narahari Sadakar. He came into that, even before Nityananda Prabhu came to Navadweep. Gadadhar Pandit and Narahari Sadakar were the Lord's very, very deep, loving associates. Narahari special service to Lord Chaitanya was to fan him with chamara, the yak tail. In fact, in this beautiful painting, we see Narahari Sadakar during the Gaur Arti. Narahari Adi Kari Chamara Dulaya Sanjaya Mukunda Basu Goshadigaya as Sanjay, Makunda, and Basu Gosh were singing beautiful kirtan, Narahari would fan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the chamara. And he would even glorify Lord Chaitanya sometimes as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which Lord Chaitanya would not tolerate. Because in this age of Kali, there is a rampant philosophy that you can become God. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. We are simultaneously one with God and different from God. 
in quality God is Satchitananda Vigraha and as the infinitesimal part of God we are also the spirit soul Jiva is Satchitananda Vigraha but Bhagavan Parabrahman is Vibhu he is supremely great his energies are all pervading and the Jivatma is infinitesimal only when we understand this conception of our oneness with God and our difference from God is there a possibility for there to be the awakening of Prem or pure love within our heart. Those who desire to enter into the Brahma Jyoti through Brahman realization of the Absolute Truth, they can transcend the modes of nature and all the sufferings of the dualities of life. But unless there is the awakening of the understanding that we are Jivira Swarupoy, Krishnara Nityadas, the eternal servants of Krishna, then real love cannot awaken within our hearts. And Lord Chaitanya, his special mission was to give that love to the world. In this way he taught us the foundational basis in which love can develop from our hearts. When Lord Chaitanya spoke to Sanatana Goswami, he explained in the culmination of his talk intimate details of the nature of pure love in the spiritual world. But he began his teachings from that foundational platform wherein all of these higher revelations can be realized. Jivera Swarupoy, Krishnera Nityadas that every living being is eternally and constitutionally the servant of Krishna. But Narahari Sarakar's love was so pure and so sweet that even when he sang songs glorifying Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Lord, the Lord would listen. Special relationship. One time Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu both came to Srikanda to the house of Narahari and they were performing Nam Sankirtan and having Hari Kata and just relishing each other's association and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda requested Narahari Sarakar please give us sweet honey to drink and Narahari was so enthusiastic to give Lord Chaitanya honey to drink that just by his desire a lake just outside of his house of water was transformed into a lake of honey. And even to this day, that place is called Madhu Pushkarini, the lake of honey. Over the centuries, it's become water again. But the sweetness of Narahari's devotion is still there. Now what does this story tell us? This was his enthusiasm to please the Lord. The Lord Nityananda Prabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, give us a little honey. So he had such enthusiasm that by his desire he created an entire lake filled with honey. This is the sign of a serious devotee. An ordinary devotee wants to just do what the Lord says, usually minimal. The Lord says, chant 16 rounds. I'll do it. I'll, I'll get this 16 rounds done. Somehow or other, I'll do it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. Finally, finished. Last bead. Or do some cooking. I'll, I'll cook and I'll... I, I, I did it. It's finished. So we just want to get our service done. But the sign of a really sincere devotee is that devotee wants to qualitatively and quantitatively do as much as he or she possibly can for the Lord. We want to do more and more and more to our capacity. That's love. Love is not just official. Official may be the basic minimum to develop love. But as we become more sincere, it's from the heart. So this is not a Hari Sadaka. If he would have given a teaspoon of honey to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they would have been satisfied. 
But his desire was not a teaspoon. His desire was a lake. If he was living in Puri, he probably would have made the whole ocean honey. But because he only had a lake near his house, he made the whole lake honey. That was his desire. And that was how the Lord just reciprocated with his desire. What was internal, the Lord manifested externally for the whole world to see. We have this example of Srila Prabhupada. Anjala Dutta, he just desired to spread Krishna's holy name all over the world. That's all he had was a desire. He didn't have contacts. He didn't have health. He didn't have money. He had nothing. He had a box of books. And the way books are bound in India, they're not very attractive for the material vision in America. In America, people try to sell their books by having really flashy, attractive binding and photos and pictures. In Prabhupada's Bhagavatams, there was no photos, those original ones. It was just a kind of a brick brown color with Indian paper, which in America, people don't, it's substandard. So he just had a box of these books. Of course, they were munificent. They were the ultimate. They were Srimad Bhagavatam. But you have to have spiritual vision. He had nothing. He only had a desire. And what did Krishna do? Krishna manifested his desire externally. And he's still manifesting. Prabhupada called himself an insignificant beggar. Anjala Dutta. And now there's 500 temples, tens and thousands of devotees, tens and millions of books. Krishna manifested his desire. Just as he manifested Narahari's desire to give him honey in an incredible way. After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu departed from this world, very soon many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya were also departing. In Narahari Sarakar, he was living then in Srikanda. He was such a merciful, empowered preacher. Who were his disciples? Raghunandan Thakur was his initiated disciple. Lochan Das Thakur was his initiated disciple. We are speaking about that great personality who wrote Sri Chaitanya Mangal, one of the greatest of the biographies of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, worshipped by the Vaishnavas. He was the obedient servant of Narahari Saraka. When Srinivasacharya was just a young man, just a teenager, he went to Srikanda and took shelter of Narahari Sarakar. Narahari Sarakar loved him like a father to a son. He embraced him. He wept tears of affection on Srinivasacharya. He in deeply instructed him in the science of Krishna consciousness and blessed him for great success in his life. Srinivasacharya loved Narahari Sarakar more than his life. He accepted him as his Shiksha Guru, heart and soul. He was initiated by Gopal Bhatta Goswami, but Narahari Sarakar was deeply his Shiksha Guru. Narottam Das Thakur, that great Acharya, he went to Srikanda and took shelter of Narahari Sarakar received instructions and blessings from him. Narottam Das Thakur accepted him as a prominent Shiksha Guru in his life, as did Shamananda Prabhu. He was such an attractive person. The greatest saints worshipped him. What to speak of the common people. He was so kind, so loving to everyone. He did not discriminate who was fit and who was unfit. He fully carried the full-fledged mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda in his heart and distributed it profusely. Srinivasacharya was completely detached from everything of this world. He was absorbed in the highest rasas of Krishna Prem. But Narahari Sarakar understood Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire for Srinivasacharya. And one time, when Srinivasacharya was in Sri Kanda with Narahari, Narahari told him, It is Lord Chaitanya's desire, he has revealed through my heart, that you must 
get married. Well, Srinivasacharya was more of a brahmachari than anyone could ever be a brahmachari. He wasn't just doing tapasya, he was texting Madhurya Ras. But Narahari told him, you get married. And because it came from Narahari Sadakar, without the slightest argument, without the slightest question, Srinivasacharya, with Narahari Sadakar's help, was married. This was the stature of this great soul. He was teaching, he was showing so much affection, and he was constantly performing Nam Sankirtan. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.